So welcome back to the Raising Our Vibration podcast, where we explore higher consciousness through spiritual practice. And today, Stephen and I are going to explore how to activate your spidey sense. Your spidey sense sounds provocative, doesn't it? And specifically through a practice called 10 Direction Perception. So what do we mean by your spidey sense? So your spidey sense is a felt sense of space. It's initially, especially in subtle energy meditation, activated by tuning into sensations inside your body and feeling the space inside your body. And as you activate that interoceptive inner felt sense, it becomes a bridge or a portal to feeling the space around you. And as you tune into that wider space around you and feel it wider and wider, becomes a bridge or a portal to this vast, boundless awareness, this self-transcending awareness that we are uh, pointing toward in meditation. And so it, it has really profound implications to sense that vast space. It really shifts your perception of who you are and your connection to the cosmos and to the vast awareness that we are. And so what interferes with that? What blocks that? Because a lot of times, especially as people are, uh, say, beginning our subtle energy meditation course, they're not Feel, they're not able to feel that space. We're, we're asking them to feel different spaces in the body. And, and it's not something that comes easily for some people, or it's just not something that people are familiar with, not used to doing. So why is that? Well, there's really in our, our culture, a suppression of our felt sense. And you could think of it as, you know, like when you're little and you're in school and you're told to sit still and be quiet. And that's not what a little body wants to do, right? A little body wants to move and feel and feel sensations and, and be active. And so we are kind of force ourselves to suppress those inner desires, those inner feelings, as we're asked to sit there and pay attention on these bits of information outside us. And and stay focused on them. And this carries over um, for many people into the work that they do, where they are, have to sit at a desk at an office and kind of, it's kind of a continuation of school where you have to suppress all the desires for things you might want to go out and do and just sit there and focus on this data in front of you. And um, so even that, um, in our information age, we have a real um, drive to consume and monitor and keep track of and, and process visual and factual and external information. And so that again, puts us our attention out there and not on feeling what's happening in here. So it's like our whole culture is based on not feeling what's happening here or feeling the space of our environment, but focusing out on uh, things and objects and facts and bits of information that we're taking in. So our whole consumer culture is based on that too. So we have a lot of factors that uh, add up to a suppressed felt sense. And so that, that's where we start from, right? We start from what we've been conditioned into, the conditioned mind of this subject-object um, orientation and this suppression of felt sense. So now, Stephen, you have a couple stories related to how we might open up our felt sense and start to um, feel that spidey sense, which is uh, a natural, effortless expression of who we are. Yeah, thank you, Kevin, and and love and blessings to everybody. Um, 
a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. So, yeah, Kevin, I, um, I've thought about this a great deal, even since I was very little. And when I was introduced to Yogananda's work, I, one thing that struck me was right at the beginning, he speaks about a practice of these direct, in his case, he talks about the six directions, you know, in front, behind, left and right, above and below. And then he also talks about within and without, and especially talks about feeling a sphere like this. And I, I thought it was very similar to some of our practices. And so it intrigued me, you know, this feeling sense, this spidey sense that we're talking about. And, and just as you said, so much of our society, in fact, so much of the way we're trained, even if you think about, if you're listening and you think about the times you're drawn back to education, right? And, and when you were educated, when you're little, you're sitting in a desk or a table and you're looking forward right at a teacher who's directing you and even now we've actually set up most of our systems to be looking into a computer just as you're doing now so it's forward of you and this vision and everything's very visual focused and it's very object subject object focused and I I really and, and I look closely at the research you know and, and to my favorite friend Andrew Newberg and his <laughs> research into for example feelings and so particularly he points to the limbic system. And then he did a lot of research when he was looking at emotions and feelings and how real they are. He actually recognized that there was very little data that's been obtained anywhere to help identify the areas of the brain that are involved in assessing how real something feels. So there's two levels of what we're talking about, Kevin, here. And that is one is you're not taught to focus on your feelings. You're taught to focus on information. And then when you do feel something, there's nothing that really validates whether that's real or not. So you say, oh, well, I, I had this feeling of God. Now, nobody goes around saying, oh, oh that must be real, right? In, in general, people will question, oh, okay, well, that's beautiful, but, you know, maybe you're a religious kind of person. Or, you know, but wouldn't it be better if you had um, an insight about the blockchain or uh, some data that help you to make a whole bunch of money, right? So feelings are not strongly validated unless you're in a situation like a spiritual community that may actually really validate that for you. And this is a point that Andrew Newberg makes is that there is very little data collected anywhere that assesses how real those feelings are so when you have this intense experience you know in meditation and so on we tend to at the moment look at our brain waves right we don't look at our feeling waves <laughs> we, we look at our brain waves so it's quite curious that even the way that we we're measuring it currently just measures one aspect of our experience and this is a point Andrew Newberg makes, and he, he said, so he, he looked a lot at research into the limbic system and the emotions and the thalamus, which determines our perception of reality. And he, you know, and that was his discovery. There was so little data in which he could compare anything with. So the degree to which we feel something, it's very difficult to us to determine, oh, is this real? You know, and you'll often hear people when they have, a, as, as you know, Kevin, in the, in the many groups that we've got, people will have an experience and then they'll go, they doubt it, right? They have the experience and they go, oh, oh well, let me check on my graph. Oh, actually, my graph doesn't really show quite what I thought I was feeling. Okay, okay, well, maybe I wasn't feeling what I thought I was feeling, right? There's all of that. So, so and, like the graph is more real than the, than the yeah. actual experience you just had. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And this is exactly what Andrew points out. There's so little data out there to support the experience that you just had, that therefore people don't know how, how to make sense. You know, our society is much more data driven in that sense, and data driven around, okay, observable, measurable data you know so it's kind of a like a cat bites its tail like like the very thing that society is pointing to the stuff out there is most important is the very thing that's measured so it's and, and you know it's been intriguing for me over the, the years to look at different companies who are just starting to look at perhaps measuring chi or prana or an inner felt sense or in emotions and then of course the tangle you get into how do you measure this emotion called happiness or ecstasy or or just something simple you know all all the different algorithms that are drawn up by different headsets to 
determine whether you're calm or not or focused or not or and then that next step what the emotion is that you're actually feeling so over you know a long period of time of experiments like like you've done uh kevin one of one of the things that i found was really useful and, and this is very simple and you can do this with everybody uh anybody that's listening you can try this with, with your kids or each other and that is um, what I would call, yeah, the Spidey Sense Jedi, <laughs> Jedi test. So what my daughter and I play a lot. So my, my daughter, Maya, so she's seven. She loves playing this particular game. And we play it out in the garden. And that is, you know, tag is a very common thing. In, in tag, you tend to use your, your, your visual sense. And you, you're looking and you're, you know, and there's a certain sense to which you're focused on awareness elsewhere. But. For the most part, it's forward facing. You're, you're chasing somebody and so on. So we play um, a closed eyes tag and we play felt, you know, like exactly like that Spidey Sense tag. So we, it, we close our eyes and we do the whole tag game with closed eyes. Now, this is, this is at first to get used to this, you might find it really actually uncomfortable <laughs> because you, number one, you've got to move with your eyes closed so you want to make sure there's not too many trees in your direction that you're going to crash into mm -hmm. and the other thing you want to do is of course the people that you're playing tag with it's they're going to come at you from all angles so at first you notice when you close your eyes that you tend to go to hearing and as, as being the next because you're listening so that's one useful practice in itself is that the hearing and so the I'll call it the 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 sense of sound or the even the felt sense of hearing because hearing has a you know it's reverberating in your eardrums it actually has a felt sense there's a there's a sense at which it, and you know this from a really loud noise that can kind of give you a headache if you're in a you know in in a rock echo locution <laughs> yes yes exactly so just like whales and dolphins so what we discovered was over a long period of playing this game. The Maya and I got very attuned to, to that echo location. You know, you'd you'd notice the sound reverberating, and you could pick up even it, the very tiniest sounds because you got really tuned into them. You could pick up where a person was, and then we started to go into the felt sense and explore that. And the felt sense, you can start to feel reverberations in the ground itself, or even in the movement of the wind. So you notice different shifts in the felt sense of space. And it's really, really a powerful experience when you play over time. It's like anything. If you start off and you just close your eyes for a bit and then you go, okay, okay, that doesn't work. Well, sure, you're not going to develop a Jedi or a Spidey sense. But we noticed that over a long period, of, so we played this over weeks, that Maya became very good at, at actually sensing in certain directions. And the other thing is, by playing this, you'll notice which of your senses start to come online. So I noticed that my, what I'm describing, that felt sense of, of a movement of body and space, I could pick up when there was a shift and, and, and you could feel it. It's even more predominant, of course, if there's winds blowing and breezes blowing because you can sense an interruption in the space. So that's actually a really useful spatial perception. Um, and the same with hearing, of course, because you're picking up hearing in much the same way you, as you would with sight. And you recognize how the whales and dolphins do it because there's, there's a bouncing off of sound and you start to become very attuned. And, and especially, which is where I'm going with this a little bit, is that especially, Kevin, behind you, because most of our, just as you've been mentioning, most of our senses in society are visual and are forward driven so we're you know looking towards the whiteboard or looking towards the screen or looking towards our phone or looking towards the television or the movies here and on and on we go and and slowly you know virtual uh reality and immersive based reality is bringing us into that but it's still vi visually you're not seeing behind you right you're still even though the the VR is incredibly immersive and wonderful. You, when you turn your head, this is why people get motion sickness when they have play VR games because there's still it's still based on your um, on your vision. And they actually discovered they did experiments with very young children in VR, 
and they discovered children, you know, it wasn't suitable because in fact, the goggles themselves are set up to be a certain distance from an adult's eyes. So with children, they're not at the right distance and kids would get headaches. So for me, no matter what somebody says about immersive reality, the, the visual part of it is still predominantly based on your vision. So sound might be able to be generated. So sounds quite interesting. It might be able to be generated more sense around. Um, and as yet, not a lot has been done in that, that feeling sense that you'd have to wear a full body suit for that to happen. So at this point in our technology, the best biofeedback device overall is still your body. And we don't use those spidey senses. So the, the, so that game I mentioned with Maya, and I know you've experienced this too with Qigong and martial arts, Kevin, as I did years and years of martial arts. And at a certain point of expertise, I, I graduated, you could say, onto Tai Chi Sword. And I studied with a Chinese master and I studied with a partner as well. So we got to know each other very well and we used real swords. And then there was a certain point, I went on a kind of a retreat for a few weeks with the master. And there was a certain point where I developed enough um, uh, expertise with the blade where the master said, okay, now we're going to do it blindfold. <laughs> and, you know, there is a, there's a certain mm -hmm. amount of your hair that stands <laughs> on end when you hear you're going to do it blindfold because there's a certain sort of issue you have with swinging sharp blades and and doing but he did it very carefully of course he he helped you to actually feel the space you know it was very much like jedi skills you so when i was doing it with a partner so um she and i would have you know the, our blades locked and then we'd pull them back and he'd get us to basically work in a I mean, in karate, it's called kata, and it's called form. You know, he would use a traditional form. So I would know when I swung through the air and I swung the same way with exactly the same precision that when it hit a certain time, my partner's blade would be right at that point. And, you know, and we didn't do anything too silly. We only worked with the blades once. We, we worked with, you know, like plastic blades to make sure we could actually do it over and over and over again many, many times. And then we worked with the actual real blades but it was a real aha to be able to feel and know and have confidence in that spatial awareness and that felt sense of feeling where the blade moved uh, as as we were doing this these routines so that's just a little brief uh, precursor or a, a pathway into just a very short exercise i'm going to guide everybody in and then i'm going to hand back to you kevin for I, I'll call it a multi-dimensional direction <laughs> <laughs> guidance, Sounds which good. I know will be extremely rich. Um, so the one I wanted to point everybody to was this felt sense of seeing and feeling behind you, right? So I'm going to get you to, just to begin with, I'm going to get you to close your eyes with me just for a few moments and just do a couple of initial cues, just really simply, just tune in with where your awareness is right now. And you might find you're looking out through your eyes. So try dropping your awareness back a little bit from your eyes with your eyes closed. Right, and sense into the back of your skull. So actually feel your awareness dropping back. And just feel for a moment. Just pause. Feel what it's like to just sit a few inches back from maybe where your awareness usually is. And just experiment a little. Drop your awareness down into your heart and see if you can open. See if you can feel a sense of openness here. And then drop this down into your feet and feel the connection with the earth. And then bring your awareness back to your, the palms of your hands, wherever they're settled. Just feel this softness in your palms. So you're just feeling, you're just checking with your awareness. And then feel into the uprightness of your spine. It's really simple. These are just very simple cues. And then just rest for a minute. Just see if you can drop any and all effort. Just so that there's no judgment about 
whether you're able to do these awareness practices or not, you're just simply present with what's happening. And just notice for a moment any tensions in your body, any sensations that are present. You're just simply noticing them, just experiencing them not as objects. So we're not going to focus here, but just simply that these experiences are like waves on an ocean, that the sensations are just flowing through. You're just allowing them if there's tensions, whatever they are. And then you can drop this focus on your body and just bring your awareness back to this vision, this inner vision to begin with. And actually bring this inner vision up and just notice the space. Just be aware of the space. And see if you can take, while your awareness is dropped back in the back of your skull, See if you, can, if you can just be aware of the infiniteness of the space in front of you, that it's actually unbound, that there's no boundaries to the space. So that you just allow this open space of awareness to be present. You can feel it. And then while your eyes are still closed, see if you can drop your awareness behind your body so that you're actually just feeling for the space behind you. A little bit like Maya and I playing our game, that you're just feeling as if somebody might be coming behind you. When I say that, you might get a little tingle up your spine because there's a sense of, you know what that feels like when somebody comes up behind you. Like there's that feeling, there's something behind you. So just sense into this feeling behind you. And you're suddenly aware, right? The spidey sense. That's those hairs go up in the back of your head. There's suddenly aware there's this actual whole felt sense behind you that you've never really opened up to. Now, slowly open your eyes while your awareness is behind you. And as you open your eyes, stay with that sense, that felt sense of space behind you. And just see if you can drop it right up into the right rear corner of your room. Right? You might actually energetically feel as if your awareness is shifting right up back there so that you're looking back down at your body with your eyes open. Right, and then just rest with your felt sense behind you, like the spidey sense. And see if you can shift that spidey sense to the left rear corner of your room. So there's a spatial sense behind you. So Kevin's going to be guiding you through this in a few moments. He's going to really help you to open up to all these directions. So here you're not focusing on anything. You're just allowing this field of vision behind you. open up so just relax now into this space of awareness and just allow the sense of feeling the space all around you because I've put an accent or a, a weight on the felt sense of seeing both with your eyes closed and your eyes open behind you. So you can actually feel it's almost like a weight, right? It's almost like this felt sense behind you is starting to open up. See if you can open it infinitely in all directions behind you as, as I hand over to Kevin. 
So just let this unfold naturally while you're resting behind you with your felt sense, your spidey sense, while you're resting in this opening of awareness. I'll just pass over to Kevin and he can guide you into the 10 directions. Kevin. Thank you, Stephen. So now I'd like you all to very slowly close your eyes. So you're keeping this sense of space as you close your eyes. And I want you to see if you can feel the core of your body from your perineum, from the base of your spine, up through the center of your body, through your heart, through the center of your brain, to the top of your head. So just see if you can have a sense for this core of your body, the central channel. And we're going to orient from here and feel space in 10 directions. So from this core, this central core of felt sense, now feel forward and feel the space in front of you. Notice how this feels. Notice the sensory quality of this space. You might feel like there's a weight, a weight to the space in front of you now because you've placed your attention within this space. And now come back into that central channel, that core and feel back into the space behind you. As you feel back into this space, Again, you might feel like there's more presence, more weight, more energy in this space behind you now. Notice how you can feel this. Now come forward back to this central core and feel out to the left, to this space on the left side of your body. So again, you might feel as attention fills this space, there's more weight or more energy, more awareness to the left. Notice that you, you can sense this. Now come back to this central core and feel out to the right. So pour your attention into this space to the right of your body. And feel how attention brings more weight or energy, awareness, presence to the right of your body. Now come back to that central core and now feel out to the left front corner of the space you're in.
and feel the presence, the weight, the energy of this space in the left front corner. Now I'll come back to that central channel and feel back into the right rear corner. Feel that presence of the right rear corner, that the weight, the energy of this space. Almost like you're pulled back into this right rear corner. Now I'll come back to the central channel. And let's go forward into the right front corner. So again, feel awareness of this space in the right front corner. Like there's more weight or energy or pull into this space. Now come back right to the center, the central core, and feel back into the left rear corner. Feel the draw back into this space. Feel the energy, the presence of this space pulling your attention, almost like there's more weight, more energy in this left rear corner. Now come back to the central channel and feel upward, feel the space above you. Feel yourself drawn upward into the space above you. You can feel like you're being lifted into this space. It's like being lifted up into a vast dome above you. Feel that whole space above you. Feel how this uplifts you. It's a pretty cool feeling. Now feel down like this space just poured down through the central channel, this space above. And now feel this pouring down through the central channel down into the space below you. Like this energy, this presence just pours down through the central channel from above, down through and into the space below you. Like you're pouring presence down into the space below you. Feel the space below you has a, a different feeling to it. It's grounding, it's very rooted and present. You might feel more solid. You can rest down into this space. And now rest awareness down and out. 
down and back, down and out. So you rest down, back and out into this vast space that expands in every direction. So feel out to the boundaries of all directions, up, down, forward, back, left, right, all the corners. Just feel the boundaries expand outward. How far out can you feel? And then feel beyond that. And let go and feel beyond that. Let go of all boundaries and rest as an infinite, boundless space. Let go and rest as vast, boundless awareness. Beyond space. Feel vast openness. It's liberating, it's exhilarating. This openness. You can feel it. Now, as vast open awareness, feel the localization of awareness inside the body. So sense the space of the body as a part of this vast space, as an expression of this vast space. And it's simply a localization of this vast awareness, this vast space. There really is no inside, no outside. There's simply paying attention to space inside the skin paying attention to space outside. And it's all one space. So now very, very slowly begin to open your eyes, maintaining this space awareness. Feeling it now with eyes open. And feel the top of your head. Feel your hands in your lap. Feel your feet on the ground. Feel the whole space. Your spidey sense is now active. It's activated. It 
feels good. What would it be like to move through life with this spacious awareness? Life might feel different. You might have a different sense of who you are, a different sense of connection to all. So thank you all for engaging in this practice. Thank you, Stephen, for this beautiful discussion and practice together. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. That was very beautiful. I agree. What if you could go throughout your life feeling just like this? Mm. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, everybody. And mm. thank you for sharing with us. Mm. Thank you, Stephen. And if you'd like more information on practices like this, on subtle energy meditation, raising our vibration, our courses, books and and ways to connect with the raising our vibration community you can visit raising our vibration.net we'd love to be in touch with you take care and bye for now